Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I hope everything's fine, I hope everyone's good. A uh, couple of little things to show you on the Himalayan, but first of all, first of all, I know this isn't the weather channel, but hey, I've got to show you this. A bit of an update from the last thing that we did when it was absolutely pouring down the rain, and guess what? Look at this, eh? There you go. Okay. So never mind. Six, no, sorry. Seventh week of rain we are in now. Still, never mind. Just lock that up. Seven weeks of total rain. Okay, so let's get back to the job in hand. A uh, couple of things I've done to the bike is, let's just get you in a bit. First of all was to fit this uh, this this GPS bar holder, whatever you call. Uh, got it off the internet. Um, once again, I have to be careful. There's a lot of these around, but they don't fit the Euro 5 model because you've got the tripper. And all a lot of them say they do, but when you actually look at them, they don't. So if you're thinking of fitting one, be careful, uh, make sure you get the right one. That's my original cradle for my Garmin. It's fitted, I haven't wired it up yet. There's a few, well, there's quite a few bits and pieces now that I need to wire up, but the tank's gotta come off to do that, so it's all nice and all connected to the, to the, uh, the little device that I put on, um, but that's for a later video. Right, one more thing that I did, and I've gotta show you this, is at the front, look at this now. Let's get this in. Can I, I hope this is picking this up. This is a sticker that I had made up for the front, okay? Uh, which I think is pretty damn cool, right? Um, shows a little mountain range, got the Himalayan under it. Um, now this is made up by my wife. She does this as a bit of a hobby. Um, I chose the colour, chose the font, whatever you want. Uh, if anybody's interested on in having any of these made, we post worldwide. Um, drop me a line in the comments and we'll quite happily sort you one out and, and which is going to be with the postage and everything else I think they're pretty cool and just 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 to get it sorted as well I did one uh, one on the back of the bike uh, just on that plate there I had my name put on I thought why not everyone names the bikes these days I didn't want to name it it's me that's riding it so there you go okay now while we're here and on the back this is what this video is all about this rack this rack here which you know it comes supplied with the bike according to uh according to royal enfield this has been upgraded up, upgraded now and it says it maximum load seven kilogram and that's what it takes right okay so that's fine i'm just going to get the other side so i'm not talking to you from behind now the thing is okay they 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 sell this as an adventure bike and I, and I love it i really do i think it's great and i suppose depending on what you want to do on an adventure bike you know if, if you're trail riding or you're off you know that, that that's fine I, I suppose you don't you're not going to carry much luggage or weight on the back of this bike but there's the other part of the adventure bike, which I'm more interested in, is taking this with me and all my equipment to go camping and all that sort of stuff. Now that's when a rack on the back is important. Whether you're gonna put a, a, a top box on or strap a huge bag to it with your tent and everything. Seven kilogram is not very good. And to be honest with you, the size of that rack is, yeah, it's not much good, is it? Do you know, to be fair. So. I looked on Hitchcock's uh, in the UK, which sells some fantastic things for these bikes, and to get an upgraded rack uh, with a carrying capacity, I think I'm right in saying, was 10 kilogram. It would have been, I don't know, I think it's about 158 pound or something like that, uh, with the delivery, because I'm in France, and then on top of that, you've got the input charge and all that, okay. And I thought to myself, you know, okay, that's good, but it's, you know, it's, this bike came with a rack, 
uh, and as much as I love the bike, there's one or two things I think they don't get right. But anyway, so I thought, well, you know what? I actually then went on to look at on the sites in India. These bikes are made in India. They must make part for them in India. So I found this little company in India, just outside Delhi, I think it is, not too sure. Uh, and I sent them an email and I said, look, um, you're advertising to the racks, will it fit the Euro 5? The guy said, yes. Uh, it's, uh, I said, what's the capacity that this rack will carry? He said to me, um, at least 15 kilogram. Now that's more like it. Okay, I said. So, uh, I ordered it. It cost me 58 Euro for the rack, plus I think it was 10, 15 postage. Um, and I had to pay 20 import, you know, big saving, and it arrived, okay? It arrived, and this is it. This, this is the rack, you know, and it is a nice bit of kit. It's a solid bit of kit. You know what, that on the back of the bike with the top box fitted to that is fine. Now I've got to be honest, right? I'll tell you one thing, when it arrived, you know, all the welds nice and tidy. You know, it's a solid, well-made thing. The one thing that let it down was the paint job. It was pretty poor, you know. Uh, it, it just had a blast over. But you know what, I went out, I got myself some uh, some paint. It's had, I've, I've given it five coats, on it up here, on a hook, you know, sprayed it down, blah, blah, blah. It's great now, that will do me great. There's a top box gotta go on there. That's another video, that's another time. Um, but this one is all about getting the rack on. So first things first, I'm gonna take the original rack off. Uh, and when I've done that, I'll get back to you and we'll see what's what. Okay, so here's the original rack. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, you know, it's, it's a solid bit of kit, but that's a very small area uh, and like I said seven kilogram which you should be able to see right on it okay so to take it off just move it over here I've had to loosen off you know a lot of the bolts to the actual pannier rack uh, all around here to allow me to get this out now I've got to be honest I, I'm actually glad I did I'm actually glad I did because when I took a lot of these bolts off, bearing in mind, you know, um, these are going to have a fair bit of weight in them, your panniers and everything all loaded up. So when I fitted this, at the very least, I would have expected it to have had some sort of thread lock. There wasn't in it. And even more worrying was that I found a couple of these bolts weren't even tightened up. They'd just been threaded in and left. Okay, you know, no big deal. Maybe when I picked it up, I should have checked all this. I didn't, maybe that's down to me. <sighs> but never mind, okay. But now, putting the reverse back on, it will be thread locked. This will all be fitted. I'm gonna do all this. I'll get back to you when it's on. See you in a bit. Okay, so here we go. There you are, fitted on. One rack, let's just get it tilted down there, like that. Now I'm really pleased with this, I really am. I think that looks a nice bit of kit, nice and solid. Uh, I mean, you know, it's great. Fix the top box onto that, job done. Now this did take a little bit longer than what I thought. And let me just tell you for why that is. Hang on a sec, let's just, I want to show you what I had to do. Okay, so. Where the pannier rails fit, you've got this arm coming down here for the rack. And the pannier rail goes into that there. Now that is just a round lug. Okay, now the problem is, on the old one, this was shaped and cut bigger for this lug to go in. This one wasn't, okay? So what I had to do, I had to get a 14 mil drill 
and drill enough air there to allow this pannier rail to go in because otherwise this fixing here as it comes down and it joins onto that was out the distance that this was against the outside of this so okay not a big job not a big job at all but what I'm saying is yeah, let me just show you on the other rack just hang on a second bring you back up a minute okay so I'm just going to toddle over there a minute and get the other rack so basically the fitting for this for the other rack here look is drilled out bigger for those lugs of the pannier rails to actually fit inside and that inside on each one makes the whole thing go the ones that i had were thicker anyway and there was there was no recess hence the fact i've had to drill it out so it took a bit longer but for me it was no problem uh i'm lucky enough to have the tools to do it um and you know i i don't mind doing these things to change things i've got an absolute as far as i'm concerned i've got a bargain i absolutely love it I've, it's on i think it looks great the next bit is the top box um so that's it and you know what let's finish this off on a bit of a high note shall we i'm gonna reopen the door again eh? and take a look at this Aye, just look at that Aye. now I'm not sure how long this is going to last but we have blue skies and you know what that's the first time for a long time that we've had blue skies anyway okay look that's it for today uh, I hope this has been of some use to someone like I say a lot of these bikes a lot of the stuff is made in India where the bikes are made uh, and okay you know I had to do a little bit of fettling to get it to fit it fits great it's strong it's got a good carrying capacity I'm happy um, that's it catch you in the next one which is going to be a bit quicker coming I think because I want to get this top box on um, catch you in the next one I hope you're all well have a fantastic time see you soon bye for now